And I'm not saying I've got the right answer on comparing this apple with this orange of the past. I think I more so start by saying, if we started a league today and you committed this act, where do we start as the minimum to protect a player and to really let the kids coming into the league know that this is a no-no, that this is a no-no. And if the players aren't fighting, like what are the players fighting for? If escrow is the most important thing on their list, you know, shouldn't they be more involved on some rule changes and saying, you know, we don't believe the hand pass should be a rule anymore. It's a, it's a dodo bird. Get, get rid of it. Causes more problem than it does. I just don't hear from them. I hear from the general manager's meetings. What are they talking about at the NHLPA meetings? Is it player safety? Are they more worried about, don't tell me to wear Kevlar. It's going to be restrictive. I don't want to wear Kevlar. As opposed to a cross check to the face has to start at, even if it's two. I don't hear enough from the players. We hear about the GMs. Uh, and then a suspension kind of comes and goes. And I, I'm not saying I've got the answer. It, there doesn't seem to be an appetite from the players that says, oh, my God, we got to we gotta do something about this. Like if, if they're not talking, maybe we shouldn't be talking about it. I, I, I don't know. And I know that there is precedence. You can go back and say, what do you want to look at? You want to look at a two-game suspension? I got files for the last seven years on what a two-gamer is. I got a file here on a fine. I got a file here on an elbow to the head. That's a three or whatever the case may be. Um, I don't know. I just, when you see it, it just doesn't sit right. It, and, and someone's new to the game and they say, what happened to that guy? Well, he was, he was given a game. Given a game, you know, chin music in baseball can be multiple game suspensions if it leads to a, a branch clearing brawl. So I don't know if Mike Hoffman has a problem. I think Mike Hoffman starts to the PA and the PA talks to the GMs and we have an open dialogue about it. Craig cross check to the head. Well, I mean, but 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 again, it 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 it. The reason I I I go to the macro is, if the principal point of contact is the head and it's the elbow and it's a two game suspension or whatever, then how can a stick where the principal point of contact to the head is a one game suspension? Uh, the, forget about how it happened. The principal point of the of contact was to the head with an action by the opposing player. I don't care if it's with your shoulder, your elbow, in the context and a stoppage or whatnot. It just doesn't make any sense to me. There's, that's where I see the inconsistency. I don't care if you said, I mean, it was easy. It was easy to say, well, based on the A.J. Greer suspension, oh, Blake Lazard will get a game. I think it should be more than that. I want a, I want a more serious deterrent in there. I'm not, listen, I've been saying this for years. Listen, you know what? We've made massive strides in hockey with, you know, understanding, you know, the science on blows to the head and trying to make sure that, you know, we, we penalize those plays. My own feeling is, and, and I feel strongly about it is, I don't care if it's accidental or on purpose. When you make contact with the head, you're out of that game. Then it's up to the Department of Player Safety to determine, does that merit further suspension? Like, I, I get there's accidents. I want the game slowed down. I'm going to go back to Bob Clark's phrase, speed bumps. I, when when a player knows he could be out of the game accidentally, if, if he did it accidentally or not, that I'll tell you what, players will slow down. Now, to your question about players, but I will say to this is, and I got a two-parter on this. I'll finish with the second part in, in appropriate order. The first part of this is the players are playing, Steve. Do, do, do we expect the players to be the ones that are lo looking out for their for safety? They have a voice. But that's not their job. Their job is not to go out and say, well, you know what, we should speak out. And, you know, Mike Hoffman did. Players do want a, 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 a playing environment that doesn't put them at unnecessary risk. Understand the thing. There's always going to be risk, unnecessary risk. That's not their job. I mean, it, it, in a work site, you know, it's not the job of the people coming on the work site to say, well, we better have steel-toed cap boots and we better have gloves and whatever you need to be safe. That, that, that's done. Hey, listen, we got injuries. We better make sure we put in safety procedures. And now you can't leave that up to the players. That's got to be done by the leaders. Do you do it in collaboration? Yes. Andrew Ferentz, this is my second part. I don't know how many years ago he said it. Player on his own team went after another player, hit him in the head. Andrew Ferentz said, that's an unacceptable play. Oh, my God, can you believe Andrew Ferris said that about his own teammate? So until we get past that type of, you know, what we talk about, 
uh, you know, culture in the game. No, Andrew Ference was exactly right. And I'm not expecting players to come out and say, hey, listen, what you did was wrong as a teammate. And maybe you do it privately. But, you know, you think about, you know, where you need to have your voice and where you need to have strength in your voice. You know what? That's where, you know, leadership has to listen to, to everybody. And people, the players in this case, voice your and maybe you don't do it publicly but do it privately and you're right the nhlpa and every but but they are working on that so we might not hear because the players get frustrated too like why are we going to do this and i'm going to finish with this i've said this for a long time the biggest challenge we have is we have 32 general managers that are jury judge executioner <laughs> like you know what I want different voices in there. I want former executives. I want former players. I want current players. I want more of a representation of the entire game and the sport. I don't just want 32 managers making all the decisions when it comes to discipline, rule changes, flow of game, everything. I want more voices in there. And I love that. 